We're clear for takeoff. Time it is, it's time for your favorite LMFTs, licensed and marriage family therapists, kings of the heart. My name is Tari Gomari Walton, and I am joined by the one, the only, Dr. John Hart. What's up, Dr. John? Brother man, it's always good to see you, man. I'm happy. I'm ready to be here with you. And like we always do, week in and week out, we're doing it for the people, brother. Doing it for the people, man. We got a good one for you guys. We got a really good one. You know, when you get married, you have a particular idea about who your your spouse is and who they're gonna be. You know, you make all these promises, and you know, you you have this idea in your head and this belief around who they are. This narrative you create about who your spouse may be, and as we all know, time goes by, people begin to yeah. change. They yeah. change for the better, they change for the worse, but more than likely, they are going to change. And oftentimes, we can find ourselves growing apart from our mate, and that can be a very very painful thing. And so this topic is all about what I did not sign up for. I did not sign up for this. I did not sign up for this particular change. Here we are 10 years into this, and you are not the person who you were 10 years ago. How does that affect your relationship? How does it impact you? And how do you overcome those kind of changes? So what do you think, Dr. John? Think this is going to be a good one for the people? I think it's going to be a great one for the people, not a good one. I mean, we see this uh, quite often in so many different ways in the therapy room, right? Right. Yeah, it's, it's it happens. It really happens. And it can happen to any couple, right? Yeah. Like, let's also just normalize that, that like, um, and, and I think, and, and I'll kind of lead us into it because I know it's one of Brother Reek's, uh, one of his biggest talking points. So I'll let him set us up, but I'll just lead us into that. You know, one of, one of the, one of the best aspects of um of just existing is evolving Mm -hmm. and if and when it happens it can be an amazing process it can be an enlightening process it can be i mean so much positivity can come from that right in so many different ways right but i think there's what we've seen that specifically in the context of relationships it's not always like, you know, um, sunshines and rainbows and, and unicorns <laughs> no and, doubt. and champagne toast and congratulations. Sometimes it's coming. Those are evolution as human beings in the context of relationships can come with some strain. Yeah. And so I just want to kind of lead into that, brother, because I know uh, as long as as long as I've known you, we've been brothers like that's always been a big piece that you're always talking. Yeah to people about when we give in talks like that, like we are evolving beings. Right. Constantly, and so constantly. let me pass it over to you, brother. Well, I mean, like that well, evolution part. I do have a question to kind of follow that up, because before we get into the actual kind of breakdown and the ways that people actually grow and change and evolve, why do you think it is that people don't grow together? Why is it that we see so often this, this change is split? You know, how people grow apart. What do you think is happening in these relationships when you see your couples that they're not actually growing together, but they're actually going in different directions? That's a that's that's a good question. I I think one of the things is um, I mean, people's people's underlying makeup uh, with what they bring in from their family of origin is always a big one. Mm -hmm. Right. So like what does resilience look like? Some people have gone through some things and. Um, it has shaped the way that they view like, you know what, I'm done growing or I figured it out. And other people are like, I'm 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 so hurt and crushed and traumatized in so many different ways. I got I got to keep going. Right. Um, so I think sometimes and it's natural, it's very natural for a couple to be together. And there are different trajectories around healing mm-hmm. and growth. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. But to your point about like not growing together, healing together, evolving together. I, I, I like to think sometimes like it's tied to like other relational dynamics as well. Mm-hmm. Right. Like 
lack of emotional intimacy, right? Because yeah. I think to, yeah. I think to evolve yep. together, you need to be emotionally intimate. You have to be connected. You have to have that bond. Right. Right. You have to. Mm-hmm. You have to. Um, I think there's probably other things going on. Uh, people's work and career mm-hmm. uh, situations blocks them. I mean, we yeah. know this. I yeah. mean, careers, career jobs are the other big aspects of our life that can really cause, to be honest, some existential crises with yeah. people. Yeah. And if you're not really going through that, there's no, I don't want to say there's no need, but there may not be uh, an impetus for you to like jumpstart any kind of evolving. Right. Um, but if you're kind of comfortable and you're kind of, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so, so there's so many different, so many different things that I think could impact the couple's ability to like evolve together. Mm-hmm. But those are just like a couple of things that come to mind from what I've seen. Yeah. Two things come to mind for me. One is that everyone doesn't value change and growth in the same way. You know, some, people, some people really are all about that. Like, I want to grow. I want to change. I want to evolve. I want to learn. I want to see what else is out there. And some people are just like, nah, I'm good. You know, I don't really like change that much. I'm comfortable. I like what I like. I know what I know. I'm good there. You know, so if you have those two various attitudes, well, guess what? You're going to be going in different directions. You're going to have one person who's going to constantly be pushing, trying to grow, trying to learn, trying to do more. And one person who's just sitting back like, nah, you know, this is... I like the job I have. I, I like, you know, the mm-hmm. house we have. I like, you know, I don't want to have to go out. I'm cool right here. I'd rather you just be here with me. And other person's like, nah, I got, I got some things I need to do. You know, and so you see that a lot. You know, even as simple as someone who likes to go out versus someone who doesn't. You know, right. well, you know, some people just aren't very social, you know. And so they don't want to change. They don't want to do anything different where the other person really does. And so I think you had that difference. But the second thing, too, is the way that, um, going to the point that you're making in terms of like emotional intimacy, the bond that you have, you know, and what your relationship's really based on. Because if yeah. you don't have a strong emotional bond or intellectual bond, if you guys aren't even sharing in similar experiences because you're not going out together, you're not really talking about things, you're not sharing, then you're not seeing what the other person is seeing. And so you're constantly just focusing on your own world and you're going to go at your own pace. And so when you are even let's talk about shared religious backgrounds. Sure. You know, if you have um, the same religious practice and you're going to church every week, well, you're probably going to be learning some of the same lessons. You can have some of the same conversations and you're going to have that thing that you can, you know, tie into to help you both grow. But if you're practicing different religions, then you're probably going to go through, you know, to different kinds of um, ceremonies and have different experiences. And unless you come back and really talk about them, you're going to be growing at a different pace. So it's like, mm-hmm. how are you guys connected? Are you guys sharing in your experiences either together or even conversationally? And if not, well, now you're going to begin to see the split because you're not seeing the same thing. So you're going to be forced to grow differently and at different paces. Those are the two main things yeah. I see. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. I think, and I think that was pretty well said. I, I'm, I'm, I think the other thing, and I'd like to you know, see what you think when you were talking. Also, I've noticed that... Um, the perception, the so so the perception of the evolution mm-hmm. I've seen sometimes be a problem, like threatening and, to another person. Yeah, and I was gonna say like so. There's like this fear about something, and and the something could be like all various things. But what what do you what have you seen or what have you noticed about the role like fear plays? How sometimes people perceive or they they they're feeling fearful around their partner's evolution and how have you seen that kind of manifest in because something? what i've seen with that is their the fear is based on the expectations that come with the changes so if i all of a sudden decide that i want to become vegan yep, yep. you know yep. now am i gonna have the same expectation of you that you stop eating meat that you stop eating yeah. meat products you know yep. and so you know what are my expectations how are my expectations going to change if i all of a sudden become saved or i start practicing you know a new religion and i get so deep into religion i think okay well my mate has to be practice the same religion, but they're not. Well, now are the expectations going to be on the mate to adapt the person's way of, of thinking and, and practicing? You know, otherwise, yep. there going to be a conflict. So I think the thing that makes people really afraid is how is it going to change the dynamic and how are, is it going to change the expectations that the, the person who's going through the change and growth is going to place on the other person? You know, you have somebody uh, yep. who, you know, yep. you're married to someone who only has a high school diploma, but you've gone on for your PhD. Well, how are your expectations going to impact, you know, now with this um, more education, how are your expectations going to change for what your mate should be doing? 
well, I know you only have your high school diploma, but have you thought about going back to college? You know, how are you going to advance in your career if you don't, you know, continue your education? So now you're putting all this additional pressure and all these extra expectations on your mate just because you've gone through, you know, those kind of changes. So I think it's the, the, the fear is based in the expectations that come along with those changes. What do you think? No, I think that's spot on. I, and I think that's one of the things that, like, I've, I've noticed as well. It's I think people start self-reflecting about, well, what does this change mean for me? Exactly. Like, even if they are happy for their partner's evolution, they really start to. Uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, I mean, I, I've seen that. I've heard that where people start to get fearful, like, well, does this mean what I'm doing or have been doing isn't right? Mm -hmm. Or I also like the word you you were saying um, and you were very intentional about it, the expectations. Yeah. So now that my partner is having uh, is, has a Ph.D. or or the expectation or or now that my partner has now started a new religion mm -hmm. or has stopped eating meat. Right. What does or that mean for weight. me? Right. <laughs> yeah. A lost weight. Right. What does that mean for me? Yeah. And in so many different ways, one of the ways being w I wonder, would they change or relate to me differently yeah. or i wonder would would our connection and i think that yeah, i think that's connection. also the yeah. other piece yeah. i think it's the connection yeah. piece yeah. now that i kind of say it out loud i mean like what, what do you think about that oh 100 like, because that's the other part too because again they see that they're growing apart they're growing differently and that yeah. connection is going to be yeah. going to be strained you yeah. know so going to the whole um fitness thing you know you adopt a fitness lifestyle now just want the listeners to know we're going to actually get into um, specific topics so we're, we're covering some of them kind of on the surface right now but we're going to get deeper into them but you think about fitness and adopting a, a healthy fitness you know lifestyle and the other person your mate doesn't and so here you are you're getting up every morning to go to the gym your mate's sleeping in you know you're eating differently your mate's still eating the same stuff you know that connection even like, you know, where you guys are going to eat is going to change. You know, well, I want to continue going here. Well, I can't eat anything from there anymore. You know, we know that's my favorite restaurant. Well, I'm sorry, but, you know, we have to find something else. You have to find a new favorite because I can't eat that anymore. You know, mm -hmm. well, you keep getting up, you know, 5 o'clock in the morning to go to the gym. You're waking me up to serve my sleep. But well, why don't you get up too? You know, so you begin to see those things happen. And I think it's that, that lack of connection or that the, the, the breaking connection of how you guys may have been similar as this person is adopting these new um, habits and lifestyles and changes, that's the part that's going to really, you know, stress you out. You know, how about you? What do you think about that part? I mean, you don't want to bring it up. So, so I'm sure you have a, an opinion on that. Well, I, I mean, no, that, I mean, I, I brought it up because like I've seen it like in, in the therapy session, mm -hmm. like, there's this fear around, I don't know how we're going to relate around this new change. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think there's also I'm going to be a little bit more specific that it, it comes out implicitly and explicitly. Sometimes there's also this fear of will you view me differently? Yeah. Right? So yeah. just so. Yeah. So forget about forget about will they make me change my ways? It's I'm also hearing aspects of will they even view me differently? Mm -hmm. Right. So a good example would be like because you don't eat meat anymore, would you view me differently right. if I continue to eat meat? Right. And that's a connecting relational kind of dynamic mm -hmm. sense of fear. So I wanted to give that example because it's it's something that pops up. Or even, you know, the person who will back, I've, I've seen this one too. Um, someone goes back to school and they get their advanced degrees and their mate isn't, you know, pursuing yeah. their degree. Yep. And yep. now they're, yep. you know, they're around a new circle and their attractions even the begin point. to change. You know, Good I point. can't really relate to my mate in the same way anymore, but I can relate to this That's person at work because we have similar backgrounds. We have similar, you know, educational backgrounds and experiences. But I really can't relate to my mate anymore because I'm in a different space. You know, so point. you see that happen too. So let's, yeah. let's, 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 let's get into it. Let's get into the topics because we keep touching on yeah. them. Let's really get into them. So the first one I want to start off with is that change in religion. Your mate all of a sudden, um, or, you know, you might have seen it happening gradually, but you guys came into your, your relationship both practicing maybe a similar religion or a similar practice or similar belief system. But along the way, something may have occurred, a loss of a family member, um, you know, some other kind of tragedy, accident, and they turn to a, a new faith or a new way to practice a faith, which is out of alignment with the way that you were doing before. You know, say they were practicing, um, you know, they were... Baptist, and then all of a sudden something happens, and now they are, um, our seventh day, seventh day of Venice, you know, which is going to be a whole different kind of practice. Mm -hmm. That can be a major strain for the relationship, you know. Again, 
I didn't sign up for that. When we first got together, we were practicing the same religion. Now you go off and you're practicing practicing something totally different. Right. How does that impact relationships oftentimes, that, that change in, in religious practices? Uh, the first thing that comes to mind, to be honest, is like values. And, yeah. Right. Remember, religion is is synonymously tied to morals and values. Right. And so when one person changes, at least from what I've noticed, it, it shakes the foundation because we usually tend to uh, say that when we get together, we're we're bringing together shared values. We that's one of the things that usually bonds us in a romantic way is we thinking about values because we're thinking about family and kids. We're thinking about legacy mm-hmm. and and reputation. So um, I, I, I'm just going straight there with the religion part. And like it, the, the disconnect and the fear is now around values. Yeah. And how how do we show the values? Are, are can two sets of values, especially if they are not in alignment, mm-hmm. can we show them at the same time? Are we OK showing them at the same time? Yeah. Is there any merging? Is there any negotiations? And so like like, yeah, like that sticks out to me mm-hmm. immediately when I think about religion. Well, values yeah. and worldview. The way that you actually yeah. see the world, how you want to interact with the world and the people in it, you know, that's going to change. You know, who you yep. want to find yourself around. You know, you may have been around a certain set of people when you were practicing the same faith, but now that they've changed into something else, they want they don't want to be around them. They see them differently. They judge them differently. And yep. so they want to be around this new group that actually follows the same faith. People really go deep into this. And so yep. how do you even, how do you deal with that? I'm thinking about... Um, I saw a post the other day, it might have even just been yesterday, where a former student of mine from Bowie State, this is probably going on 20 years ago, we mm-hmm. follow each other on, on Facebook. She started talking about how she uh, was practicing, not practicing, but yeah, was doing yoga and teaching yoga probably about mm-hmm. five or six years ago, and really, really heavy into it. But now she is getting deeper into her faith, recognizing that uh, for her, that yoga goes against, the practice of yoga goes against her beliefs. You know, and so now she's like totally disgusted by it and telling people, you know, if you're really, you know, a Christian, then you shouldn't be practicing, you know, yoga and just seeing it very differently than how she saw it before because of the influences of her religious practice. And it's like, well, you know, if you're in a relationship with somebody like that and maybe you guys met around the whole practice of of, um, of yoga. yoga, now here they are and they're practicing their religion a little bit more strictly, which kind of cuts that out. What do you do as that mate? I mean, how do you how do you how do you handle that? Because now they are dismissing the thing that connected you to. You know, based that's a, on that's religion. A good point. Yeah, that's 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 a good point. Um, and and you know what's really interesting about that example is that, um, I think it's also safe to say that like lifestyle is also tied to our identity, mm-hmm. and there are people who see things like yoga as part of their identity and yeah. part of their yeah. being. And so when you brought up that example, I was kind of like, man, that would be pretty hard because what if the shared experience and the bonding and the shared identity is tied to the yoga and then now it's in conflict with the religion? Yep. It's it's going to bring some it's going to create some issues and both parties are going to have to talk it through. And 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 sadly, and, and, and I think it's safe to say that some of the things that um, some of the examples that we'll, we'll give after this is going to be around um, what what for each of us as individuals are we willing? What is our threshold? What is our boundaries around some of these yeah. evolutionary changes? Right. I, so I just want to throw that out there. I mean, I, it seems like that resonates with you. Right, brother? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because, you know, you still have to maintain a healthy relationship to, to a certain degree. And those boundaries are going to be important. You know, yeah, go ahead. If this is what you want to do, you want to practice this new faith, but don't come in here telling me what to do. You know, yeah. that's my boundary. Yeah. You know, hey, I love you, but you're not going to sit up here and tell me who to believe in. You know, so yeah. you see that kind of thing happen, you know, pretty often when it comes to those religious changes. Um, I've had clients where when they first got married, they, mo- they were both, actually this happened a couple times, they were both practicing Islam. But then somewhere down the line, you know, one of them fell out and really didn't communicate that clearly with the other. And so now here they're sitting in session. He's like, oh, I didn't realize that you weren't really practicing anymore. He's like, yeah, that's why I'm not going to the mosque. That's why I'm not, you know, praying, blah, blah, blah. And that becomes a source of conflict because, again, it goes into what you were saying, your views, you know, um, your values, your, your morals, you know, your worldview. If you're not in alignment anymore on that, that's going to have a major impact. And one person, hey, you know, if that's what you want to do, fine. But 
don't don't expect me to get up and go to church with you. Don't expect me to go and get yeah. up and go to the mosque with you. You know, yeah. that's just not going to happen. And so when you start talking about how you actually deal with those differences when they happen, the first thing that comes to mind is, yo, you have to kind of accept that this is your change. And this is probably going to be the answer for most of these. That's what but I was going to th- say, yeah. This is your change, and you can't expect that anybody else is going to follow you. Now, you can encourage them, you can talk to them, but you can't have the, ex- it's, it's the expectations. Again, we talk about how having expectations can always lead to major disappointment. You yep. can't have the expectation that your mate is going to change with you. I agree. You know, again, you can encourage them, but they have to go at their own pace. They have to, they have to discover it just like you discovered it. You know, and so that can't be um, part of your relationship where you feel like you're crossing their boundaries and trying to force them into something that you believe in just because you think that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, I agree. And the, the other thing that you said that I, w- I want to highlight, and I think this is probably an unintentional consequence mm-hmm. of um, sometimes when in a relationship, one person goes through evolutionary change and you in, I don't think you um, said the word, but it but it struck out to me. We got to be very careful because it can also come off as um, at times patronizing and also like the, a shift in power dynamics, right? Like, yeah, oh yeah, you, you 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 cannot like start teaching and preaching and 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 you know forcing people or 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 you know what I mean, like because that eats away at the actual relationship. Mm-hmm. You, you see what I mean, like yeah. that the the finger pointing and the like well, the, the you, judgment. I, I, yeah, 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 all those things. And and I and and again, it's like. I only bring that up because that's in response to what you said about um, it's your change. So you have to be comfortable in it being your change. And what you can't do is you can't allow your evolutionary change to now be your platform to now harass your partner. Right. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. It's not. It's because now you guys are about to have a lot more problems. Right. Yeah. And so I think the answer to, you know, to just go a step beyond that, too, is there has to be a level of acceptance. Yeah. You know, as a person yeah. who isn't making the change, who isn't evolving, um, who isn't who isn't practicing this new religion, you have to accept, hey, this is what your mate decided to do. And even though your views may not be in line, there's something else that you have to work on specifically. But recognizing that this is where they're going and you have to have, you know, a, a place of acceptance and safety, you know, for them in that. And as a person who's actually going through the evolutionary change, accepting that your mate isn't going to be changing with you, that they're not they're not going to start practicing just because you're doing it. They're not going to start practicing the same religious faith or in the same way that you are just because this is what you wanted to do. So you have to have that that place of acceptance for each other. Yeah, straight up. So what about this one? I see this a lot in, in practice, too. You know, you have clients who come in and you know, say for individual therapy and you're giving them all these tools and all these new skills and they're really learning a lot and they're taking a lot from the sessions and they're evolving. You see the evolution and you're, you're proud of them, but their mate isn't because their mate's not getting the same lessons. They're not getting the same skills. So unless you're going home and sharing them with them and their mate, your mate is um, open to, to hearing from you and learning with True. you, you know, True. you're going to grow in, in these phenomenal ways that your mate isn't. And so as a person who is sitting back there as a mate who's not, you know, going to therapy, you know, you want to, and this is the funny part, you, you wanted your mate to go to therapy because, you, you know, you figured, all right, you're crazy, you need to go to therapy. So they go to therapy, they start growing, they start learning, and now they're no longer operating the way that you got used to and what you got comfortable with. You know, now you have to begin to change your narrative around who your mate is, yeah. you know, but that's hard to do because, one, you may not trust what you're saying, but two, um, it's just not it's not familiar to you. Yeah. And so how do you handle that as a person who, again, you're not the one going through therapy, but you're seeing that your mate is. How do you handle those those advances that your mate your mate is making that you're just not familiar with? Um, I think it's important to truly understand, first and foremost, like what is it that you are feeling? And I know it sounds cliche, but it's probably going to be some level of insecurity mm-hmm. and some level of fear. I would start there. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to play around and say, um, you know, like there's like other other things. But I think from like an intrapersonal standpoint, mm-hmm. I think it just sparks some insecurity about like, OK, like what again, like that whole notion of like, what does it mean for me? Um, I do like what you said, because we do have narratives about our partner. Yeah. 
And I think that's a really good thing that you pulled out that is a it, it's 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 a hard thing to now revise. Right. You now have to sit down and come to the uh, get a grip around my partner is evolving in ways that don't necessarily fit the narrative that I'm used to saying exactly. or thinking about them. Yeah. So I, I that really resonated with me. And I, I mean, so I'll, I'll you know, so I'll let you kind of take that because that was a good one. But I'm also thinking just from like an insecure standpoint, like I think that just causes us to start doing far more self-reflection mm. and not just that but if the person is not ready for that kind of self-reflection it's almost like a it, it starts people start getting angry that's when you start getting angry at therapy and then you start like <laughs> well your therapist don't know what they're talking about yeah. you know i've had they're turning, I've had, they're turning you against me yeah like yeah. I, I've, I've heard those kinds of things and so yeah I, I think that's what comes to mind for me when i think about this scenario mm-hmm. yeah and, and it's important to point out for people who haven't gone through therapy when you talk about narrative it's the stories that we have in our minds about who our mates are or who anybody is, you know, even about you, you know, you have a narrative about who you are and that may not be in alignment with but how other people see you, you know, but it's just a story that you tell yourself about who people are, that narrative that you maintain the tales about this person. Yeah. You know, they, you know, you you went to school with somebody and you knew they used to drink all the time in school and so now here it is 10 years later, you run into them again and you're still looking at looking at them like a drunk. But no, they're a family person now and they're they're doing really good. And so they're not that same sloppy person that you kept in your mind from 10 yep. years ago, you know. Yep. And go. so so it's that narrative. You have to change the narrative. So even with your mate, when you see that your mate is trying new things and I think that's the part that makes it hard because as people are going through therapy and they're taking all these new skills and these tools that they're learning, they're trying. And oftentimes, you know, the adoption of these new tools and skills don't happen overnight. It's a, yeah. it's a gradual process. That's and so you point. may yeah. so you may be doing things better. But to your mate, anytime you fall back into old habits, it's like, oh, see, you're not changing. You're not you're not growing. You know, you're still doing the same stuff. But it's, it's a gradual process. And so it, all that does is encourage it made to maintain the narrative of who you are, even though you recognize and your, your friends recognize that and your family recognizes, your therapist recognizes that you are growing, that you are changing, that you are looking at the world differently, that you're interacting with the world differently. But if you're made because it's so close and they see you so often and you interact with them so often, it's really hard for them to change their narrative um, as quickly and adopt a new narrative about you. And so they get stuck. And they don't trust the change because they don't think it's going to stick. And so yeah. that, that creates that main, you know, one of the main um, conflicts between the two of you. They don't trust that this, who you're becoming is genuine, that this is just a, a front until it all falls apart again. Huh. Now, that's real. Uh, that's 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 real. I, I, I like that a lot. And I think everything that you said, I've seen that even commenting in therapy oh, yeah. by the Constant. other partner. Constant. That's pretty spot on. Yeah. 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 No, no. When I think about it and it's like, and that can be hard for the person who's evolving to hear. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. right. I'm like, doing all this about- work. What are you talking about? You don't see this. Do you yeah. see me every yeah. day? I'm getting up and trying something new every day. I'm getting up telling you, I love you. I'm, I'm working towards your love languages. You don't see yeah. that. You don't appreciate that. How can yeah, you tell me I'm offended. being the same person? Yeah, they take it hard. Man. They, they, they take it they hard. Take yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. That was a really good one. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean that that kind of brought back some memories <laughs> to some past <laughs> sessions right there, man. That that hit home. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a good one though, it, because we've seen that and mm-hmm. we know people. We know list. We know some of our listeners have been in those situations, yeah. and I think that's why it resonated so much because it's sometimes our evolution is to benefit the relationship. You know. Yeah. Uh, and when and, you don't and, see it. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, yeah, that that hits different. Yeah. Yeah. That hits different. Um what about what about the person who's actually evolving? Like you just mentioned, you know, there is somebody who is in therapy and they are going through through these sessions with us and they're learning and they're growing and now they're looking at their mate and their mate isn't changing. And so what do you see coming out of their mouths about their mates and how they're describing and judging their mates because again their mate isn't in therapy you are and you're the one who's actually growing what are you hearing them say about their mates and their expectations for their mates 
Um, yeah, there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of couples that I've had to work with on this over the last couple of years, and they can get quite. And I'm not going to generalize, but like in both scenarios, it was the female partner like making moves and going to therapy and all that stuff, and the male partners were not. Like they they were they were supportive in the beginning, but I think, but I think what happened was is that sometimes when we evolve, we realize how different we are than like 10, 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. And that's and 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 so people's foundations internally starts to get rocked around like, well, right, meaning it starts to it starts, it can spiral at times as well, like, I'm not sure of like, if, if, if you're the one for me or, Mm -hmm. or, or this, Mm -hmm. right. And so now, and, and because those kinds of that, that growth of that journey has been a co-occurring within therapy. Now the other partner is like, yo, to, you know, to hell with this. And, um, I don't know what's going on. Um, and there is, there is a panic, but it doesn't mean that there is like a major shift or a major change. But to your point, I'm going to go back to what you said a couple of minutes ago. But uh, uh, what I have noted, what I've had to say to both partners is, but let's also be honest and real, though. You guys saw signs along along the way getting up to this point. And sometimes like you have to like let people know that like what is blocking or what is the fear because mm-hmm. that's usually where i go back with both partners i'm like i know you're scared to keep growing and i know you're scared because of their growth but outside of their growth like uh, like do you have any do you even have any thoughts about your own growth right and right. that challenge right there it like changes the ball game at times like it's because it's really about yo do you value growth you know, yeah. do you you want your you want your mate to change and do things differently, but do you actually value their growth and do you value your own growth? Do you see that you have your own things to work on or is in your mind, hey, I'm fine. They're the one that needs to, to change. But now here they are changing and you don't like the change because it is kind of leaving you behind, you know. Yeah. But the thing that I have to communicate to the the ones who are in therapy and the ones who are going through the growth and the, the changes that, hey, I have to remind them, look, your mate isn't here. You know, yeah. so they're at home doing what they've always done. You're the one growing. You can't put the pressure on them to start performing differently just because you're learning new skills. That's not fair. That's not fair. Yeah. You know, yeah, you can encourage them to go to, to therapy too. You can bring them here if you want to do a session, a couple session, because um, I'm seeing you as an individual. But you can't place those same expectations. Again, here goes that word. You can't place those same expectations on your mate to step up in the way that you are because they're not learning what you're learning. So unless you're yeah. being very intentional about going home and sharing the lesson that you learned today with your mate. And I've done that. I've sent people home with, you know, we have the expressor, you know, empathetic listener yeah. activity that we do. Yeah. I've yeah. sent individuals home with that, that document saying here, sit down and talk to your mate about this. Maybe this will change the way that you guys communicate with each other, you know, but yeah. re- outside of doing that, you are taking these steps and strides that your mate isn't getting the chance to do. So you can't put that pressure on them to perform in the way that you do just because you're doing it and they're not. Yeah, I agree. I I do. But I also do wonder when you were saying that um, and not to say that it's like a reflection on you per se, but I've also I've also had clients in which I did the same thing and they come off to their partner outside of therapy as if like, now the master or now like you need to be doing this and my therapist said and 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 so when you said you, you used words like sharing and i think that's the appropriate word yeah right if you're in individual therapy and you know and you're learning stuff and you're evolving and growing and your partner's not there okay ideally it'd be great to like say you know what i think we should go to therapy together or, or something like that but if you are in individual therapy and, you're, and your partner's not there and you are learning stuff, share it. Right. But don't let it be because I I've seen this happen over the years where people will take what we're giving them and then just start Bast- being like, well, you, <laughs> yo. I mean, and 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 now the person is 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 loathing therapy even more as their partner, right? Because they're like because in their mind they're like, well, therapy got you acting towards me a certain kind of way now. Mm-hmm. as if you better than me or like yeah. you're, you're, and you'll yeah. hear people say you're not my therapist right 
You see yeah. what I mean? Yeah, like, no so doubt. I just want to put, I just want to throw that out there because like sometimes like people are undermining their own ability around their partners trying to connect around their growth because now you're taking the stuff that you learn from therapy and people don't want lectures. They don't want yeah, lessons. True. You can't force people true. to read the self-help book. True. The people don't want, if people are not ready, they're not ready. Mm-hmm. But that's where like, like we, we've been talking about in, in today's, uh, conversation, but that's where like those expectations come. You right. got to reserve that for yourself. Right, right. Encouraging. Look at again. You right. can always encourage them to do things, but you can't expect them to. Right, right. The, the exactly. two different, two different big e words. Right, encouragement versus expectations. Yep. You go in there with yep. the expectation that they're going to do the same thing that you're doing. You're going to fall flat on your face. But if you can go in there and encourage them and let them discover on their own, they're going to have to make up their own decisions. And now. Whether they decide to do it or not, you're going to have to change your relation to um, what you think should be happening. You know, you always want to be careful about how you're imagining, you know, your life changing because you may be disappointed by the expectations you gain from this new perspective that you have. You know, so chill, you know, encourage them, share with them, talk to them about it, but don't become a therapist. Don't become the teacher. Thank you. you. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's what just, I mean. Just yeah, share the away information and encourage them to, hey, you know, we can try this. If you're not down, you're not down. But this is just another tool that I see working for me. This might be helpful for us. You know, but it's about taking that pressure off, but just trying to share and show, yo, this is a, me genuinely caring. Yeah. And 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 that's why. And, and again, we're always talking about process and the approach. And that's that's why I brought it up, because mm-hmm. I have I don't know if you have, but I have had. Um, people come back and they're like, well, you know, my partner is not really responding well to my growth and my change. And I'm like, well, walk me through how you're talking to them about it or even dealing with it. And they're like, well, I'm telling them they need to read this and they need to <laughs> No, I didn't tell you to do that. Right, I never exactly, said that. Exactly. Exactly. Like yeah. I've ne- I that's never a, told you to do that. I've been there too. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah. And, and, and then again, I have to like, because sometimes people do get excited about their growth and their evolution and they so badly want it for their partner. But it's I always tell them, but if they don't want it for themselves, you about to get in a lot of trouble trying to yep. force it down their throat. Yep. And that goes for everything we're talking about. Religion. 100%. Fitness. 100%. You know, um, schooling, all of it. It all It's all the same thing. You get excited. You get caught up in it. That doesn't mean your mate has to. Yeah. You know, it'd be great if they did. You know, and that's something else for you to bond around, but they may not, and you can't have that expectation. Right. You know, right. we, we have enough time for maybe one more, for one more. Mm-hmm. Um, and the one that I was thinking about was around sex. You know, this is a big one because it can influence a number of different things. One being, you know, you started off hot and heavy early in your relationship because that's just what you do. You know, you're, you're still learning. You're still growing with each other. You're excited to see each other. So it's like sex, sex, sex all the time. But years go by, you get into your careers or you get back into school or you get involved in other projects and you're, you're doing different services. Maybe you're having kids and the amount of sex that you're having is no longer on par with what it was. And for one partner, hey, they may still be like, look it, I want it, I want it all the time, I want you all the time. And the other partner's like, yo, chill, man. We got we, we got we got bills to pay. We gotta go to work. You know, we can't just stay in bed all day. You know? And so for the person who still wants what they've always had, now you're looking at your mate like, yo, what's what happened to you? And so how do you deal with that dynamic, especially with something so um integral to to people's th- desires within their relationship that sex and intercourse you know how do you address that with your mates and it be being um more accepting of the changes that each person may be going through that's creating the conflict uh, I, would, I would go uh, you know sex and intimacy is one of those things where i always tell folks like in, you need to go to couples therapy immediately Mm -hmm. like that's always like the first go to like you because there's a good chance that it's not just evolution but the evolution may have sparked or stemmed from like other things that are going on and 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 let's let's also be let's also be honest that like sex and intimacy is so complicated and nuanced Mm -hmm. that it it it's it's not just because your partner started reading said author that now (laughs) Th- this has changed or right. because um you know just because like the kids 
you know, and 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 stuff like that. Like, there's actually a far, there's far more layers there, and so, oh, so many, I, I, you know. So I always say, like, when those, when things like sex and intimacy start going, when one, even if one partner is not experiencing well, that's enough to say we need to go get help. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, though, you need to start creating space around talking. Instead of trying to force yes. the actual yes. act, if that makes sense, yeah, I would. I I tend to recommend to couples that don't try to be like, well, let's try to get. I would actually fall back from the sex and try to create far more spaces around. Let's talk about what's going on. Right. Where are you feeling? Where right. are you coming from? Mm-hmm. Because there's something there. But that's like one of the most important things I tend to say outside of like I would fall back. There needs to be far more talking now. Yeah. Something's going on. Yeah. It's that understanding, you know, approaching yeah. your mate with compassion, trying to understand where they're coming from, you know, because people go through biological changes. Yeah. You know, people yeah. start developing different mental health issues. So depression happens and all of a sudden they're not. There's also medical issues you know, medical, that go undiagnosed. Right. Uh, medical hello. issues, um, different stressors in, in, yeah. in life, um, you know, just things happen. Sometimes yeah. the desire wanes. I mean, there's so many different things, but all you're doing is looking at it as rejection, but not taking time to consider what the changes are happening with, hey, they, they adopted a new religion. And so yeah. sex is only meant for procreation now. You yeah. know, so, you know, you, you see this change happening and you don't like it because you're no longer getting what you need. Right. Well, yeah, you have to approach it made with compassion and figure out what's going on with them. And now you have to, to come to a, a place of, of a new normal. You know, you may not be having sex five, six times a week. It may be cut down to one. It may be once every other week, you know. Yeah. And even though you really want it, you know, you have to figure out, look, it, this isn't part of what our relationship is anymore. But then that touches on other changes that may happen because now we can start talking about lifestyle changes. Yep. You're not feeling yep. fulfilled sexually in your relationship. So now maybe you want to change the dynamic with that relationship is. You know, now you want to have a more open relationship or you want to become a swinger or you want to become you know polyamorous yep. any of i mean it, it, all these different changes may occur but then any which way you flip it someone has to get to a place of um acceptance and understanding of this is where the person is and adopting um these new behaviors you know yourself you know this is about main how do you still maintain that connection yeah that's where it's at maintaining the connection and sometimes that may not always start out or primarily be through the physical act yeah to be honest yeah and i, I talk about the same thing yeah. man there's yeah. so many different topics that we can go through this we're gonna have to do a part two at some point um yeah. we have to do a part two so hopefully you guys enjoyed that conversation dr john come on man give the people your noble truths for this week um i would say i would say if you or your partner is going through some kind of change, growth, healing, evolutionary change. I think one of the most important things is to like start bringing them in as early as possible yeah. about what's going on. Yeah. I do think it's one of the best things to do. Yeah. So if you're if you're slowly starting to think about sex differently, you're starting you're slowly starting to think about religion. You're slowly starting to think about. Uh, I don't know dietary options bring them in as early as possible and 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 just let it be like an open um space and for the other partner don't freak out yeah it's it's just beginning conversations just be in the moment and just understand each other and just and just share it but don't make any drastic drastic moves is usually what i tell right. people so yeah. I'm, I'm gonna stop there for my noble truth so what do you think brother i think for my noble truth this week i want people to you know when you start having these conversations kind of piggyback on what you're saying be open just be open to yeah. understanding it's not about yeah. thinking that okay i have to change i have to keep up i have to do these, all these different things as well no it's really about just being open to to hearing you know you can have a conversation listen it may be for you it may not be for you but just listen. Be open to hearing what the other person says. Don't approach it from, like Dr. Said, Dr. John said earlier, from a place of fear. Don't yeah. be scared. Don't be scared. Just, yeah. hey, just listen and be open to whatever the possibility is and make sure that, you know, you are communicating very openly and transparently about how you're feeling about those changes. You know, so as yeah. they're changing, being just as transparent as a person who's not changing um, to say, hey, 
this is making me a little nervous. This isn't something I'm comfortable with. I don't want to do this like the same way that you are. Um, but I welcome the change for you. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's spot on. Yeah. That's definitely, definitely got to pick it up again, man. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, man. No doubt. No doubt. Well, you guys, it's time for us to wrap it up. This has been a great discussion by the Kings of the Hearts once again. Dr. John, where can our listeners find out more about you? Uh, check us out at kingsoftheheart.com. Uh, you can check me out at rccmailing.com. Um, always doing a lot of different stuff. Really excited. Also doing some stuff for the Beer Institute of Justice. You know, uh, pretty busy. It's always for the people, man. Always for uh, people. Brother Rick, where can we find you, brother? You know, you can find me here at kingsoftheheart.com. You can also find me at tarikomarywalton.com or viewsandvibes.com. If this is your first time hearing us, hearing the Kings of the Heart podcast, make sure you go back and listen to our catalog. A lot of great discussions, different guests. We have our Cypher 3 with Weena Collins. You know, so yep. much good information out there. We're just trying to keep you informed, trying to help you along. We want you to think. We want you to experience. So go back and listen to the catalog and all your different streaming platforms. All right, folks, we got to go. Hope you enjoyed this show. And we will be seeing you again very, very soon. Take care, everybody.